Hey everyone, this is Susan at EVPL Red Bank, and today I'd like to show you how to make ear savers. Now, ear savers are something that you can take and put on your mask so that the ear loops won't put so much tension on the back of your ears, and it'll just make things a little less painful when you have long wear. So you can sew them or you can crochet them, and I'd like to show you both ways to do that today. So for the crochet, what you're gonna do, you're going to take your yarn, and you are going to make a slip knot. So the way you do that is you're just going to make it into a loop and you are going to pull the long side through that loop and tighten it. And then that way when you put it on your crochet hook or your knitting needle, if you uh, use this for knitting, you can have a tighter fit. And so the way that you start out is you're going to do a chain stitch and you're going to do 14 chains. So you are going to wrap from the back to the front and you're going to pull that through. And this, is, this part's called a yarn over and then when you pull it through it's a chain stitch. So we've got two, we're going to do that for 14. And so once we've got our 14, what we're going to do, this is the only time you do this in the whole project, but you're going to see this first stitch you made and you're just going to skip it. You're going to go directly into the second stitch and you're going to do single crochets all the way down. So the way you do a single crochet is you go in through this top loop and you do a yarn over and you pull it through and then you do a yarn over and you're going to pull it through both. And you are just going to do that all the way down. So in yarn over through one, yarn over through both. And that should last you all the way through the rest of the row. Now, as you approach the end of the row and you get to this last stitch here, what you're gonna do to kind of curve the end so that we can also go all the way back up here you are going to put five single crochets in this last stitch and that will make it a little bit easier to get to the other side of the work. So in, yarn over, through, yarn over, over both, five times. Okay, and so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take this other side of the chain stitch and you are going to single crochet all the way back up just like you have been doing. So you put the needle through here, yarn over, through, yarn over, through both. And that should take all the way down. And then once you've got to the end, see it looks a little bit uneven, but it's still kind of mostly curved. So you're gonna finish that curve by doing a slip stitch in the first single crochet you made through the whole project. So you're gonna put your needle through the whole stitch this time, yarn over, through one, and then you're going to take this through one and you're gonna pull it through the other and pull tight. Now, if you want to, you can make a chain stitch and pull even tighter just to secure it. And then you're going to take your loop and you're going to snip it. And from there you should have the basis for the crocheted ear saver. And then what you can do with this extra yarn is you can either weave it into the ends. I use the uh, end loops, although I think there's different methods on how to do it. Or you could just cut it off if you don't care about it looking especially neat. And so... I'm going to show you how to sew on the buttons when we get to the ribbon bookmark, which we should start right now. So for the ribbon, you're going to cut about five inches of ribbon, um, and that'll just give you a little bit of extra room to work with because you are going to have to hem the sides to make them look a little nicer. Now, if you want to, you can use um, fabric, and you could do five inches by, this is about one, so I, one inch, so I'd maybe use like an inch and a half so that you can have some hemming room for this side. I just picked uh, I just picked ribbon because the ends are a little bit easier to hem and you won't have to do all this extra work with the long sides. So what you're gonna do, I'm using a contrasting thread just so you can see. You're going to fold over the ends 
just a little bit. I'd say maybe like a quarter inch. And you don't necessarily have to pin it because you can just pinch it. And you are going to go down with the needle and then back up. And you're going to make a knot just to secure it. Now you just put the uh, needle through the doubled thread where you have that knot and it's going to kind of form like a slip knot. It's just going to kind of tie that down. And we're just going to do a running stitch across. It's not going to take that much time. You just go down with the needle and then back up with that needle. And if you don't want to take that extra time and you feel some trust in your aiming skills, you can go down, up, down, up, down, up, and then pull it all through at once. Just be aware that that does kind of pucker the fabric, so you might have to straighten it out a little. And so that's going to give you a nice hem just to keep the ends from fraying any further. And then you're going to secure that knot by going down and up through the last stitch you made and pulling the thread until it makes a loop. You're going to put the needle through that loop, pull the loop closed, and repeat that a couple times. I usually do a total of three just to be extra secure, but you really can stop after like two if you wanted to. And then weave your needle in through the last stitch or two to make it look a little bit nicer. And then you can snip your thread from there. And you can do the exact same with the other side of the ribbon just to hem it. And I'll do that real quick just to show you. You re-knot your thread. Fold it over. Down up with the needle. Put the needle through the doubled thread in between the two threads to make a knot and pull tight and then this really is just a few stitches down up down up down up you can even do a fourth one and you pull it through and it really takes no time whatsoever secure your knot Put the needle through the loop a couple times. And this time I'll just do two. Let's play a little dangerously today. And then you take your needle and you just put it through the last stitch to secure it. And you could do this a couple times if you want to. You don't have to. Just puts the thread a little bit more towards the middle. And then you snip your thread. And so once you've done this, you are going to sew on the buttons. Now this is the wrong side where you've been making the hems. This is gonna be the right side. And you can still see the hems, but you wouldn't if you got a matching thread. I just got a contrasting thread just for better illustration. And so you can use buttons here. If you feel comfortable using something like hooks or snaps, you could sew those on. Um, I have used pop tabs, as you can see here. Um, if you don't have buttons that match or if you don't have buttons that are big enough, these work just as fine. And the way that you are going to sew on your button is you're going to place it where you want it. I'd say about aligned with the hem might be a nice place to start. And from the bottom, you are going to pull your needle through, I would say the bottom left hole, but it doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, you just start with one. And then with a four hole button, you're going to go to the diagonal. With a two hole button, you're going to go to the other one. And like last time, you're going to pull the needle through the doubled thread to secure a knot. And 
And once that knot is tightened, you're just going to repeat that a couple times. I'd say anywhere between two and five is good, with two being on the little more dangerous scale. I'm going to do four, because I'm a little bit on the more cautious side. And then what you're going to do from there, once you've done that many diagonally, you go in through the opposite bottom diagonal. So you would go just straight down from the top right to the bottom right, pull through, and then you go in through the diagonal to that hole. And obviously with a two hole button, you wouldn't have to do that same thing. And then once you have done your final amount of stitching, uh, to make sure that the button isn't too tight against the fabric, you're going to fold the fabric back and put it through that last buttonhole. And you're going to wrap the string around the button clockwise I'd say about three or four times and then you're going to put the needle back through the fabric or the ribbon in this case and that will just make it not so flush against the fabric and then at the end you are going to put your needle through either a pass stitch or another bit of the fabric and you are going to tie off just like last time you're going to have a loop you're going to close that loop Make a, another one, put the needle through, close it. By now you probably know the drill. And to secure that, you can just stick the needle through one more time and snip it. Now, I'm going to show you real quick how you can also sew on a pop tab. It's pretty much the same process as the button, only it's a little less... Um, time consuming because there's only two holes in a pop tab and so it's very similar also to what you would expect with a two hole button. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your tab and you're going to place it where you'd like to see it. So about the same thing I'd say aligned with the hem and you're going to as close as you can to this middle bar put the needle up and then back down you're going to secure the knot and this is going to be more than the two to five up and downs of the button you're going to want to do this a little bit more because it's such a wide bar so I'd try and do like two or three just to like get the bar so that it doesn't move too much so that you've got all the way across you've got left middle right and you could even do further if you'd like to. And then you just do a couple stitches on the way back down just to secure it. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be super thick because this is really just to keep your mask from hurting you too much. Now once you've done enough that you feel that it's securely on the fabric on the crocheted fabric on the ribbon uh, you're going to do just the basic tie off you're not going to have to wrap it around uh, this piece because the metal back is a little sharp and that's a little bit more um, dangerous of ripping or fraying uh, if you do that so you are going to put your needle through now it's a little bit harder to see sometimes so put your needle through an old stitch Pull the needle until there is a loop. Put the needle through that loop and close it. Now put the needle through the new loop and close it. And pull tight. And then wrap it through one more time. And you're done. And that's how you have some ear savers. 
If you like this video, make sure to follow us on social media. It's EVPL Library with one L across all platforms. We'd love to see if you make any of these. Make sure to send them in to us. We hope you're safe and well. You have a great day.